Hi everybody, Grax Bishop here and welcome to my stream where today I will be sharing with you my new setup. Well, it's not really a new setup, it's just something that I decided to try out. I recently got myself a Canon 80D which outputs to uh, HD video and you can output it onto a HDMI cable and I thought, you know what, what would happen if I connected it all up? to my Elgato and try streaming it and seeing what kind of quality I get. And hopefully um, my face is much sharper and hopefully that my frame rate is at 60 frames per second and hopefully it looks very, very lovely. And I also modified the, um, the layouts. So the main focus is my head and there is some information about the chat box here. And down here would be notifications. I'm just looking at the screen on, over here. And over there would be the boop, social media links. So how about I give you a run through of how I set everything up. This I'm hoping that this instructional video will give you everything you need to set up your own streaming into the best quality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the camera here. And what you'll see now is you have a camera in front of me and also a camera to the side of me. They should both be running at roughly the same frame rate and they should be synchronizing all the sound. I'm going to give you a bit of a tour. I'm going to give you a bit of a tour of my setup. So if you excuse me a second, what we'll do is we'll pull, oops, pull this out of there. Get a nice little close up of me. Hello. And we'll give you a nice little tour. So first things first, the camera. Uh, the camera itself is a Canon ATD, as I mentioned before, and it is connected to an HDMI out, which connects all the way to, excuse me, let's move the cable around, that Elgato HD60. Except it's not the El directly connected to the HD60, because it's connected to this. It's connected to this iSolemn HDMI splitter. I don't think it matters so much what brand of HDMI splitter you choose, it's just the one I particularly chose. Now the reason why I did that is because I've noticed that for some reason the output from the Canon wasn't able to be fed directly into the, um, into the HD60 and I don't know why that is. So what I've noticed, if, if I take the signal from the cam uh, camera split it two ways so one way goes into the El Gato and the other way goes into uh, the big TV over there because why not then it seems to work I'm not quite sure if it's because it's some kind of copyright restriction going on whether it be the uh, HD and what's it called HCD H, HDCP copyright protection high definition copyright protection that's probably it so this seems to go around that I don't think the Canon has any of this copyright protection, but it's, it seems to be a workaround for me. So there's all that. And then, uh, what else have we got going on here? Hey, all right. Talk to you later, PDT. Thanks for joining me in the stream. Uh, next up is the laptop itself, where I've connected the um, Elgato HD60 to the laptop, and I'm running it through OBS, and this OBS Studios. And this software gives me the um, layouts how I want it to be, which includes this pop-up here. And then there is also the microphone, which is the Blue Yeti microphone, which I use to talk directly into it. And I've got that connected via USB to my laptop. So that's picking up, this is the audio that you're picking up from there. You might also notice this little thing here, which is a pop shield, which is this pop shield specifically, which is made in China. Now the reason I picked this up is because it was cheap. It only cost me like a fiver, and it seems to do the job. I'm hoping it does the job. What I used to do before was have one of those pop shields with the arm that stretches around and covers the uh, microphone, but I found that too clumsy. I'm hoping that this, which slips on very nicely, should do the job. Uh, what else do I have? I also have my tablet, which contains both the Twitch stream chat um, and right now I've got it to do my notes. This is, seems to be the best way I can actually take a look at the chat right now. 
I'm going to my web, uh, my Twitch page and just had it running straight off this. I haven't found a decent client yet, but this is the best way I can see everybody's chat. Um, another interesting thing worth noting is this USB keypad. And the reason why I have this USB keypad is it allows me to change different camera angles or what this OBS refers to as scenes. So I can switch from His name is Grab. And I can switch to this camera angle here. And I can also switch back into here. I can assign each of these numpads to a particular scene. There's no real reason why you would need this as an external thing. I mean, this only cost me five pounds, something dirt cheap. You could use your keyboard on your, on your computer if you wanted to. But because my laptop is all the way over there, partly because it's so noisy and I want the fan to be not picked up at all or as little as possible I kept it external so that's how I control that other things worth the note is pretty much uh, one other bonus thing right so with this eye splitter here you can run it off the mains and in fact you should run it off the mains because it, that's how it powers up but if you have a USB connection you can run it off a power bank right there so the, whole, the splitter is running off a power bank, which is a nice little thing, because one thing to potentially keep in mind is with the DSLR running off of its own battery for potentially an hour or two, you could have that running off a, a battery pack, the splitter, and the Elgato is running off your laptop. You can make this a very, very mobile setup, which could be, which could lead to all sorts of possibilities. Um, this... Uh, this is a webcam C9, a Logitech C9220 webcam, which uh, I bought for mainly my streaming. This is for my main gaming stream. I uh, want to, to do the video camera on the side whilst I'm playing a game on the top, oh, in the main screen. This is just a nice little bit of an extra, but this shows that you can have both a, a camera, a camcorder, a DSLR camera, and this happening at the same time. I could potentially have two or three HD cameras in the go, but then I would need to buy another Elgato capture card or an Elgato capture stick for specifically for cameras. Something to keep in mind. Also, I've also got this soft light box here, which illuminates my face as much as possible. And that's pretty much it in terms of all the hardware. I'm just going to switch this over back to here and then put this back onto this kind of stuff. So this is the hardware which I've set up right now to test out this stream. And I'll put all the links in the description, well, I'll put a description down below of all the equipment I use in the description box. Now, in terms of uh, software, in terms of having everything set up, there are a couple of nuances that's worth noting to try and get you the best experience. Um, let's see, let's check my notes. Uh, oh yeah, one thing. Um, quick thing on the H Canon HD, the Canon 80D. One thing you need to do is you need to go into the menus of the camera, the menu in the camera, and disable the auto screen lock. Because if you don't just do that, then the camera will uh, decide to lock itself out because it's trying to save power. This isn't recording per se directly onto the SD card. It's just outputting to a screen. And if you don't turn off the auto lock, it locks the screen. Disable the auto lock, it turns off the screen and then you won't get a feed. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is show you the Elgato setup, uh, which is connected to OBS. So I'm gonna share the screen with you now. So excuse this effect. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is the sound. Right now, I've got the all my sound set up entirely on the Yeti. And what I've done is I've added an extra thing, where is it, here, called Yeti Mic, which is specifically designed for the USB Yeti Mic to get the best sound quality. Um, I'm not planning to give a complete full rundown of how OBS Studio works, but I'd be happy to do another video if you guys are interested. But I will say this, this is actually pretty important. Because the Elgato capture card produces a one, a roughly one second delay between what it captures 
and what it broadcasts out through OBS, you need to add a delay through the microphone. And I'll show you what this means right now. So you get the Yeti mic settings here, you go to the cog, you go to advanced uh, audio properties, and you'll notice all these numbers here. And you'll see this one for Yeti mic. So what would happen if I would set that to zero? Like so, click and close. And in theory, you should be able to see that my audio is now completely delayed. Um, let me just double check that with my headphones just to make sure I'm not talking absolutely rubbish. Um, let's see. Mary had a little lamb. One, two, three, four. Let's see. It looks like it seems to be keeping up right. Anyway, the point is, this is what you need to set here. In the, uh, the, in the delay. That's not, that's not zero, but you might notice a slight delay. Let me go and set it to zero. <clears throat> because the keyboard is all over here. Zero. And close. So, now that it's set to zero, you will be able to hear a slight delay. I'm hoping they hear a slight delay. Mary had a little lamb, one, two, three, four. Perfect, you see? You see this whole delay thing? And this caught me out the first time I noticed this problem. And it wasn't until I did a Google search, and it was uh, Zeffler, uh, Seaforce, uh, youtube.com for uh, Seaforce, who showed me this tip. So that, again, is to go to the COG, uh, audio setting, uh, advanced audio properties, and set the microphone input delay to... About a second. So, excuse me a second. One. One second, uh, which is a thousand milliseconds, like so. And now the audio should be back to normal and there should be no delays whatsoever. Mary had a little lamb. There you go. Everything's back to normal. So now that's all synchronized and just fine. Um, I will say this as well. If you you might have noticed that I was using the Elgato capture card and the webcam to do a synchronized recording at the same time. I had to add a delay to the webcam because, like I said before, the Elgato has a one second delay in terms of what gets captured and what gets broadcast. So you need to add a delay to that as well. So let's say, for example, this isn't the um, uh, the webcam, but for the sake of this example, I will show you. If you right-click on that, then go to Filters. This gives you a whole bunch of different filters which you can use. Um, but the one we're interested in is the synchronous delay. So you click on Video Delay, and then you give a particular name, whatever you want. And from here, you would add in the delay in milliseconds. Now, this is the sort of number you can just play around with and tweak to your heart's desire. But once you're happy with that, you click and close. And in theory, you should get a slight delay between uh, the output. So you use this uh, filters delay to try and sync up the Elgato capture and the webcam to be roughly at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off right now so delete that there we go so everything should be back to normal like so uh let's see is there anything else that needs to be done to my notes i think i pretty much done. oh yeah i will say this um you only want one source of audio for your talkie talkie which includes which is just your microphone you gotta bear in mind that other devices like the cam uh, like the camera and the webcam will all pick up audio as well so you need to remember to mute the mic the audio sources you don't want to hear otherwise um, you'll get interference and it just sounds terrible and the and the one that always catches me out is related to the mic and the yeti uh, where the mic is just a default microphone from whatever default microphone source you use for your computer and the Yeti, and because of the delay, you're hearing uh, an echo in effect, which is absolutely horrible, which catches me up. So that's something for you to keep in mind as well for these here. 
and we'll just switch the camera back to here. I'm trying to switch the camera, but I can't do it because my focus is not on the stage. So what I would do is I'll click on the stage here, left click, and then I'll switch it over to put it back the way I want it to be. And that is pretty much everything that I do to set up the Canon 80D to work with the camcorder, uh, to work with the webcam and work with the Elgato, streaming at a nice high definition 60 frames per second. I think this is running at 720p um, because that's the most stable number for a continuous stream. Uh, you can play around with the numbers to make it 1080p at 60 frames per second if your device allows for it. But this is the kind of th things you would experiment with. And that brings this video to a conclusion in terms of my setup with the Canon 80D. Like I said, I'll put this video onto YouTube and then I'll put all the information down in the description down below, which includes all the equipment that I use. And I hope this video is very, very useful. And I hope you can use this to make your own video streams. And I hope it inspires you to make some great streams. Thank you very much for watching.